In today's episode, we take a look at Liverpool thug is jailed for shooting nine-year-old Olivia Pratt Corbel to death, and how fears mount over the military-grade weapons flooding Merseyside. Giving evidence in court, Thomas Cashman told the jury, I'm not a killer, I'm a dad. The conclusion the jury was supposed to make of this was clear. But what sort of man would risk taking the life of another, let alone a child, by firing a gun in a residential street? Perhaps the very same man who would think nothing of recklessly unleashing a hail of bullets in a drive-by shooting close to a children's playground. Detectives found that Cashman may have been involved in another botched attempt to kill Joseph Knee two weeks before nine-year-old Olivia Pratt Corbel was shot dead. The first failed hit took place in broad daylight, close to a primary school and a playground in the next street to Olivia's house. The incident involved a gunman armed with a self-loading Glock pistol, opening fire from a dark car on a man who was riding an e-bike. Miraculously, nobody was injured in the attack and the gunman escaped but police say bullet cases recovered from the scene matched some of those used by Cashman on the night Olivia was murdered. It is believed that Nia, a convicted drug dealer, was the intended target and Cashman may have been the hitman on this occasion too. At the time, police promised to leave no stone unturned in the hunt for the gunman. But if he was the culprit that night, it didn't bother Cashman in the slightest. Just a fortnight later, armed and ready to kill, he headed out on the streets of Liverpool with knee the target once again. The fact that Cashman was indeed a dad clearly counted for nothing. Nor did the knowledge that the city in which he was born and bred had seen too many innocent young people fall victim to gun crime, most recently at the hands of criminals armed with devastating checkmate machine pistols. Indeed, in a tragic coincidence, Olivia's death at Cashman's hands would occur 15 years to the day that 11-year-old Rhys Jones was gunned down as he walked home from football practice. Rhys's killer, Sean Mercer, who was 16 years old at the time, had been trying to shoot a member of a rival gang with a battered World War I revolver. The fatal shot was fired just two miles from Olivia's home. Such was the outrage at the time that many in the community vowed it would mark a watershed moment in Liverpool's fight back against armed crime. But Cashman's actions on the night of August 22nd last year showed how far the fight still has to run. How drugs and violence they bring with them continue to wreak havoc on society. Cashman's adult life had been one shaped of criminality. The son of a meat porter, he was raised in a council house, 15 minute walk from Olivia's home. He left school at age 14 finding work delivering newspapers and washing cars before getting a job on fairgrounds in Wales. Within a couple of years, he was smoking cannabis on a daily basis. Selling it, he said, was a natural progression. Cashman met his future partner, Kayleigh Ann Sweeney, who is also 34 years old, when they were barely out of primary school and they were still teenagers when she first became pregnant. The couple have a son, aged 14, and a four-year-old daughter. He told the jury he tried to change his life around and stop dealing drugs when he became a father, dabbling instead in selling cars, but it didn't last. The rewards offered by a criminal lifestyle saw to that. By the time of the shooting, he was earning up to £5,000 a week selling kilos of cannabis to contacts, living around Finch Lane, the main road at the top of Olivia Street. His life of crime helped enable him and Miss Sweeney to afford to live in a £450,000 detached house on an upmarket development where neighbours drive Bentleys and Teslas. The couple are understood to have been paying £2,000 a month for a four-bedroom rented property from the end of 2021, with Miss Sweeney driving a Land Rover Discovery Sport. In addition, they were renting a luxury two-bedroom apartment in a block overlooking the River Mersey and frequently travelled abroad for holidays. Asked in court whether Miss Sweeney knew the source of his extraordinary wealth. More than seven times the average salary in the area. Cashman replied, she never asked me. I never told her. At the time of the shooting, Miss Sweeney had her own cosmetics clinic. 
However, strangely, the business was dissolved just days before Cashman was charged with murder. Given evidence, he attempted to justify his £250,000 annual earnings by saying he was not a bad person, as he didn't sell Class A drugs. He'd also insist that he had nothing to do with Olivia's shooting, and at the time of the killing, he had been at a friend's house, counting out £10,000 in cash and smoking cannabis. But the prosecution claimed he was the gunman, and on that night in question, he had once again been in pursuit of knee. What motivated the attempts on Target's life is unclear. During his trial, Cashman told the jury he was just a local cannabis dealer who did not have any underworld enemies. But Liverpool-based crime sources have claimed that he built a reputation on Merseyside as a man with a gun. It is also known that Cashman was an enforcer in one of the UK's most powerful and secretive drug gangs. Known as the Hyton Mafia, Media sources claimed that Cashman had worked for the crime group, which was born in Stockbridge Village of Knowsley in Merseyside in the 1990s. Police in UK's FBI have been at war with the gang for the last decade. The house where Olivia was shot dead in Dovecoat area was reportedly the heart of the gang's territory, a neighbourhood in the stranglehold of brutal drug dealers. Nee himself had a lengthy criminal past, in 2009, he was jailed for six and a half years for serving as a foot soldier in a multi-million pound drugs gang. In 2018, he was jailed for 45 months over a string of burglaries, which culminated in a 125 mile per hour police chase. He is understood to have been free from prison on licence in 2020. The court heard Nee and his family had their enemies, and it was not the first time he had been targeting and shooting. Detectives say that Cash was subsequent admission to a witness that someone was coming for him and he wanted to get them first is as near as they could get to a motive. Possibly with the first attempt having failed, Cashman was determined to save face and do the job properly. What happened next, reports Britain. Running along Kings Eve Avenue on August 2022, Cashman opened fire at knee with a Glock, hearing the gunshots. Olivia's mother, Cheryl Corbell, opened her front door to see what was happening, only to be confronted with Nee, who, seeing the door ajar, ran towards the house. It was a warm night and Olivia had been struggling to get to sleep, saying she was too hot. When the commotion happened, she was at the bottom of the stairs, telling her mother, I'm scared, Mummy. I'm scared. As Miss Corbell went back inside and tried in vain to shut the door, two shots were fired by Cashman using a second gun, a revolver. One bullet became lodged in the door and the other hit Miss Corbell in the hand before striking the schoolgirl in the chest. As Miss Corbell tried to shield her daughter, Nee burst through the front door, followed by Cashman. Nee was shot in the leg and torso, but survived. The gunman then fled, running across the back of the gardens to escape. Inside the house, what had happened became sickeningly apparent. Miss Corbell said the door flew open and I was huddled over Olivia because I couldn't lift her by myself because of my arm. She said there was blood everywhere. I knew it wasn't right. I lifted her top and that's when I knew she'd been shot in the chest. Neighbour Adele Mar described seeing her from the bedroom window, a man dressed all in black from head to toe, chasing another man. He was running with an arm stretched out in front of him, she told police. Seconds later, I heard another two loud noises followed by the worst screaming I have ever heard in my life. I think it was a woman screaming hysterical, out of control. It threw me into instant panic, because I knew something bad had happened. I could hear Chloe, my neighbour, Cheryl's daughter, on the phone to someone. She sounded distraught. She was saying, where are they? Where are they? She's dying. I realised that something must have happened at Cheryl's house. Arrested and charged... Cashman continued to deny any involvement in the killing, but during the trial, the evidence of a former lover proved crucial in linking him to the crime. The one told after the shooting that Cashman came to her house and changed his clothes, and that she heard him say he had done Joey. Cashman told the court she was a woman scorned and accused her of lying because she wanted to ruin his life. Speaking after the trial, Detective Superintendent Mark Baker 
of Merseyside Police praised the woman's bravery. He said we had hoped and prayed through our witness appeal that a witness of this nature would come forward. She showed incredible bravery. Probably in my 30 years service, I've never seen such bravery. The court heard, with all potential witnesses, were so scared against court that the prosecution had to apply for witness summons. That sense of fear was also felt in the community where Olivia was gunned down. There, residents are described how they started wearing makeshift bulletproof vests to go to the shops because they're so frightened of gun crime. Police have also revealed how feuding gangs across Merseyside have reported using military-grade weapons as they fight over a lucrative drug trade. During 2022, there were 49 shootings across Merseyside, according to police, including five incidents where people lost their lives. The day Olivia's death, council worker Ashley Dale was killed in her back garden in a shooting in which she was not believed to be intended target. And on Christmas Eve, in Wirral, Al Edwards was fatally injured when a gunman opened fire outside the lighthouse pub. Both women, as well as 22-year-old Sam Rimmer, who was killed in the same week as Olivia and Miss Dale, were shot by criminals using powerful Scorpion machine pistols, which can fire 15 rounds a second. The Chief Constable of Merseyside Police, Serena Kennedy, said, I am concerned about the type of weaponry we are seeing on the streets of Merseyside. So we know that Scorpion firearms appeared on UK soil in about 2021. It is frightening in the terms of the way these Scorpion weapons work, in terms of fact, they can discharge over 10 bullets in a matter of seconds. I think we are seeing the impact of those weapons on the streets of Merseyside. We know that they've been used eight times over the past two years. Thank you.